It's story time, it's story time, it's story time, it's story time, it's story time with Uncle Scotty. Hello! Thank you for tuning in to Story Time with Uncle Scotty. I am your host, as you may or may not know, Uncle Scotty. We have our own mugs. The stories are everywhere. Mm. Hope you're hydrating. Hope you're consuming the water in your own mug or and washing your hands as often as possible. Look how clean my hands are. It's like I just got a manicure 45 times a day because that's how often I wash my hands. Thank you to our sponsor, Time, keeping stories flavorful since 1444. Love that year. Who was president that year? That's right. You may recall, we are reading Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Louis Schaar. And we're learning about all of these students who live in this school that's built like a skyscraper instead of like a school. On the 30th floor, that's where they go to class. They have to walk all the way up. And I would hope that none of you out there in your new schools, your home schools. By the way, I was talking to some nephews out there, my real nephews, and they were telling me that, um, I asked them what they did, and they were like, we did some homework, and I realized that all the work that's being done right now is homework. You're doing homework, all your work is homework. I'm doing some homework. I did some homework this morning. I'm gonna do some more homework later. Has it ever been such a fun time to do homework? That's right, it hasn't. Okay, we are continuing on with our next story. In chapter nine, Mauricia. Mauricia liked ice cream. Who doesn't? She was sweet and pretty and could beat up any boy in Mrs. Jewel's class. Everybody liked Mauricia, except Kathy. But then, she didn't like anybody. Mauricia only liked ice cream. Every day, Mauricia bought an ice cream cone to school and kept it in her desk until lunchtime. At first, she brought chocolate ice cream every day. But she soon tired of chocolate ice cream, so she started bringing vanilla. But she got tired of vanilla too. Then, she got tired of strawberry, Fudge ripple, butter pecan, pistachio, and burgundy cherry in that order. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Hmm? Let's hear it. Yeah. I like chocolate. Also, you know what's really good? Cookie dough ice cream. But then a terrible thing happened. Mauricia got tired of ice cream. By that time, her desk was a mess and everything in it was sticky. Everybody liked Mauricia, but now Mauricia didn't like anything. Mrs. Jules hated to see Mauricia unhappy. I don't understand it, Miss Jules, cried Mauricia. There just aren't any good flavors anymore. So Mrs. Jules worked all night. The next day, she brought in a new flavor of ice cream for Mauricia. It was Mauricia-flavored ice cream. Everybody will like it, thought Mrs. Jules, because everybody likes Mauricia. Here you are, Mauricia, said Mrs. Jules. Mauricia flavored ice cream. Everybody gathered around as Mauricia tasted it. They hoped she'd like it. Mauricia took a lick. <coughs> well, said Mrs. Jules. Mauricia took another lick. <coughs> well, asked the class. This ice cream has no taste, said Mauricia. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste good. It doesn't have any taste at all. It doesn't taste like anything at all. Mrs. Jules was heartbroken. Here, let me try it, said Todd. He tasted it. You're crazy, Mauricia, he said. This is the best tasting ice cream I've ever eaten. Try some, Dee Dee. Mmm. -hmm. It's delicious, said Dee Dee. It's so sweet and creamy. She passed it around the room. I need some, I need some water for this ice cream talk. Oh, it's so good, said Leslie. I think it tastes terrible, said Kathy. Kathy doesn't like anything. I don't understand it, said Mauricia. I don't taste a thing. Mrs. Jewel slapped herself in the face. Psh! Oh, I've made a big mistake, Mauricia. Of course you can't taste anything. It's Mauricia flavored ice cream. It's the same taste you always taste when you're not tasting anything at all. So the next day, Mrs. Jules brought in Joe-flavored ice cream. Mauricia liked it. So did everybody else. Joe, though, thought it had no taste. 
Everybody liked Mauricia, but now Mauricia only liked Joe. The following day, Mrs. Jules brought in Ron flavored ice cream. Ron thought it had no taste, but everybody else loved it. Everybody liked Mauricia. Mauricia only liked Joe and Ron. By the end of the month, Mrs. Jules had brought in 27 new flavors of ice cream, one for each member of the class. Everybody liked Mauricia, and Mauricia liked everybody. They all tasted so good. All except Kathy, that is. Kathy flavored ice cream tasted a little bit like old baloney. Like old baloney. Haven't really seen that in a pint or at your corner ice cream store. Old baloney. Everyone still agreed that Mauricia flavored ice cream was the best, except Mauricia. She liked Todd ice cream the best. This turned out to be a problem. Every once in a while, Mauricia would try to take a bite out of Todd's arm in order to get that very special flavor. And here you can see Mauricia try to take a bite out of Todd's arm. You can't do that. You can't do that. All right, let's do one more. Chapter 10, Paul. Hashtag Paulways. Paul had the best seat in Mrs. Jewel's class. He sat in the back of the room. It was the seat that was the farthest away from Mrs. Jules. Mrs. Jules was teaching the class about fractions. She drew a picture of pie on the blackboard. She cut the pie into eight pieces. This reminds me of a story that we read called Charlie Pie Chart and the Case of the Missing Pizza Slice. She cut the pie into eight pieces. She explained that each piece was one eighth of the pie. Paul never paid attention. He didn't see the picture of the pie. He didn't see anything. Well, he did see one thing. Actually, he saw two things. He saw Leslie's two pigtails. Leslie sat in front of Paul. She had two long brown pigtails that reached all the way down to her waist. And here we can see a picture of Paul. And that must be Leslie with her two pigtails that reach all the way down to her waist. Paul saw those pigtails and had a terrible urge come over him. He just wanted to pull a pigtail. He wanted to wrap his fist around it, feel the hair in between his fingers, and just yank. He thought it would also be fun to tie the pigtails together, or better yet, tie them to her chair. But most of all, he just wanted to pull one. Slowly, he reached for the one on the right. No, what am I doing, he thought. I'll only get into trouble. Because Paul had it made. He sat in the back of the room. He paid no attention to anyone, and nobody paid any attention to him. But if he pulled a pigtail, it would all be over. Leslie would tell on him, and he would become the center of attention. Some of us like being the center of attention. Some of us, like Paul, don't. Paul sighed and slowly withdrew his arm. But Paul couldn't ignore those pigtails. There they were, dangling right in front of him, just begging to be pulled. He would close his eyes, but he couldn't make the pigtails disappear. He could still smell them and hear them. What? He could almost taste them. Maybe just a little tug, he thought. No, 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 none. There they hung, easily within reach. Well, just let them hang there, thought Paul. It would be foolish to pull one, no matter how tempting they were. None of the other children in class pulled pigtails. Why should he? Of course, none of the other children sat behind Leslie either. It was just a simple matter of being able to think clearly. That was all. Paul had thought it over and decided not to pull one. It was simple as that. Suddenly, his arm shot forward. He grabbed Leslie's right pigtail and yanked. Yeah! Screamed Leslie. Everybody looked at her. Paul pulled my pigtail, she said. They all looked at Paul. Whoosh. I, I, I couldn't help it, said Paul. You'd better learn how to help it, said Mrs. Jules. She was speaking in a higher voice because she was upset. She wrote Paul's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Tell Leslie you're sorry. I'm sorry, Leslie, said Paul. Humph, said Leslie. Paul felt horrible. Never again would he pull another pigtail. Except there was one problem. 
he still wasn't satisfied. He had pulled the right one, but that wasn't enough. He wanted to pull the left one too. It was as if he heard a little voice coming from the pigtail saying, pull me, Paul, pull me, pull me, Paul, pull me. I'm a pigtail, gotta pull me, Paul, pull, bless pigtail, Paul, pull me, pull me, pull me. I can't, Paul answered. My name's already on the blackboard under the word discipline. Big deal, said the pigtail. Pull me, pull me, Paul, I'm a pigtail, pull me, pull me. No way, said Paul, never again. Oh, come on, Paul. Just a little tug, urged the pigtail. Pull me, pull me. What harm could it do? Lots of harm, said Paul. Leslie will scream and I'll get in trouble again. And here you can see. This is Leslie looking pixelated, getting her first pigtail yanked. Ah! And this is the pigtail yelling. Pull me, pull me, pull me, pull me, Paul. Pull me, I'm a pigtail. Lots of harm, said Paul. Leslie will scream and I'll get in trouble again. Boy, that's not fair. That's not fair, Paul. Why the pigtail? You pulled the right one. That one Pull me too. Now it's my turn. I, I know, but I can't, said Paul. Sure you can, said the pigtail. Just grab me and yank. Yank. Pull me, Paul. Pull me. <laughs> Still a little tickle. No, said Paul. It's not right. Sure it is, Paul, said the pigtail. Pigtails are meant to be pulled. That's why what we're here for, to be pulled. Tell that to Leslie, said Paul. Leslie won't mind, said the pigtail. I promise. I'll bet, said Paul, just like she didn't mind last time. You just didn't pull hard enough, said the pigtail. Leslie likes us pulled real hard. Pull me, pull me, Paul, pull me, pull me, pigtail, pull me. Really? asked Paul. Cross my heart. I didn't know pigtails had hearts, said the pigtail. The harder, the better. Okay, said Paul, but if you're lying, I promise, said the pigtail. I promise. And here you can see, it's true. Pigtail. Pull me, pull me, Paul. Pull me, pull me. Pull me, Paul, pull me, please. Paul grabbed the left pigtail. Felt good in his hand. He pulled as hard as he could. <sighs> Slow motion. <laughs> yeah! Screamed Leslie. <sighs> Mrs. Jules asked, Paul, did you pull Leslie's pigtail again? No, said Paul. I pulled the other one. All the children laughed. Are you trying to be funny? Said Mrs. Jules. No, said Paul. I was trying to be fair. I couldn't pull one and not the other. The children laughed again. Pigtails are meant to be pulled, Paul concluded. Mrs. Jules put a check next to Paul's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. But at last, Paul was satisfied. True, his name was on the blackboard with a check next to it, but that didn't really matter. All he had to do was stay out of trouble for the rest of the day and his name would be erased. It's easy to stay out of trouble when you have the best seat in the class. In fact, Paul could do this every day. He could pull Leslie's pigtails twice and then stay out of trouble for the rest of the day. There was nothing Leslie could do about it. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Leslie screamed, Yeah! Mrs. Jewell circled Paul's name and sent him home early on the kindergarten bus. Nobody would believe that Paul hadn't pulled Leslie's pigtail again. Just Paul in his lesson. And I can't wait to find, about, find out what happens next to the next person in the next story. Next time on Storytime with Uncle Scotty, I have been your host and it has been a pleasure to be here. Don't forget to do your homework, no matter where you're doing it from, probably your home, and wash your hands before, after, and during that homework. Thank you to our sponsors, Time. Time is our big sponsor on Patreon. Because you can't have story time without time. Otherwise, it's just... And we will see you next story time.